Gautil, what do you have for us today? So we have developed a new tool to uh, help and support uh, the health worker in, a, in the primary healthcare facility to better manage the acute illnesses in children. Such as what acute illnesses? So the acute illnesses that we cover are, I mean, more or less all the more frequent infectious diseases that could uh, happen in, uh, in children. And so the one that will bring cough, uh, fever, diarrhea. And so we help the clinician take care of the patient more than the disease, actually. How do you do that? So we design a clinical pathway, so it means that we, we, have, uh, we have created a full algorithm that states step by step all the, the, the process that the clinician should take in order to appropriately identify the disease and give the appropriate treatment. This has never been done before? This um, was never been done in MSF. We were providing them some guidelines that are more broadly presenting. Uh, if you reach this diagnosis, then you should give the treatment. But it was not clearly defining how you reach the diagnosis. Okay. So okay. this is what we bring new. Uh, we have developed, I mean, the idea was based also on what was done by WHO in this uh, integrated management of childhood illness that already had developed some syndromic algorithm. But actually their guidelines were very uh, ambiguous and it was not driving neither the clinician to the diagnosis and a lot of disease we are not addressed in this in this uh, algorithm so okay. what yeah so i can see on the table you've got the algorithm which is written down on a paper format exactly so because we wanted to really uh, stress all the steps that should be taken especially also to identify which patient are severe which one should be referred to the hospital but then also to uh, go uh, according to the child presentation into specific guidelines or recommendations we ended up having a very complex protocols and, and pathways being a doctor is not easy no, being a doctor is not easy. <laughs> so how do you make it easier for the doctor? And how do we make it easier for the doctor was by um, programming now all this content into an Android application that helps the clinician navigate through all the process of the consultation. So if you, the, all the content here has been uh, created into this electronic algorithm and now the clinician will take all the steps and answer uh, all the questions to the tablet and it helps him to reach the appropriate diagnosis. So here there is a lot of checklists like uh, making sure that there is no severe signs, no danger signs. And if there are not, then we continue and uh, we need to register the patient. Maybe just I should mention at that point that this is not a patient file. We have just designed what we call a clinical decision support system. It helps the clinician treating the patient the day he comes, but we haven't developed something that would uh, allow the clinician to get this information once the child comes back. It is not okay, a so it's not file. an electronic medical record health information system, exactly. it's simply a clinician tool. Okay, yeah. that's clear. But, but still we need to identify the patient because what we wanted possible was that uh, when the child comes, if there is a lab test to be done, this, or if there is a more, I mean, a more severe case coming, this consultation should be paused and clinicians should be able to take another, uh, another patient uh, while waiting for the patient to come back to the lab or to take someone more severe in the okay, clinic. Dr. Bugnavi. Clotilde, this looks excellent. Um, and can you tell us, when you've used it, what, what, what have been the outcomes? What's different? I noticed from your um, poster here that, you're, that there's something about antibiotic prescriptions, which is obviously very important. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, yes, one of our big objectives was to reduce the huge overprescription of drugs that happen in our context. Uh, we, we should remember that in the primary healthcare uh, settings or facility we work with, there is, uh, I mean, there is a lack of qualified health worker. I mean, it's nurses, it's sometimes community health workers that handle the consultation. They have received limited training, they often receive limited supervision, and they work in an environment where the childhood mortality due to infectious disease is very high. And because they have no access to appropriate diagnostic tools nor skills, they often tend to prescribe an antibiotic to be on the safe side. And it results in a lot of unnecessary antibiotic prescriptions uh, and then driving antibiotic resistance. So our, one of our objectives was to help them identify the patient who needs, but also the patient who will not benefit from antibiotic. And so this tool has been implemented now since uh, end of 2016 in, uh, in three health facilities in Central African Republic. Um, and what we saw is that we managed to reduce by two to half the, the, the um, proportion of consultation where an antibiotic was prescribed. Um, and, yeah. and if I can ask the devil, uh, if, if I, the difficult question then, is that 
Is that safe? I mean, have you seen more children have worse outcomes because they aren't getting treatment or because you're enabling people who aren't nurses or doctors to treat these children? So has there been any ad adverse outcomes? So currently we haven't, uh, in, in this project, we haven't measured the clinical outcome of the patient. And actually what we can say is that also when we were uh, providing our clinical guidelines, our green guide, we never looked at the outcome uh, of, uh, for the patient on, on, on the treatment that we are giving. Uh, what we know, because it has been measured in other uh, settings, is that giving inappropriately antibiotics do not prevent antibiotic infections and do not bring better outcome. Uh, so, but this is something that uh, we are still considering, trying to uh, perform appropriate research so that we can measure this, uh, this clinical outcome and, uh, and show that our procedures are safe. But, I mean, for an MSF context, this sounds fantastic. You're expanding access, you're bringing treatment closer to the people, um, and you're doing it in what seems to be a very safe way without an overuse of antibiotics. Would, would that be a safe summary? It is a safe summary, and I think what maybe I, f I would like to add at the end is that when we looked at the, how it was implemented in the Central African Republic, we implemented it in three health facilities that were already, it's, so it's government health facility that were already supported by MSF since two years. So the clinician had received some training by MSF nurses, expatriate nurses that bring some clinical training and, 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 and supervision. But until we brought the tablet, the supervisor felt that this training were not really getting translated into the consultation process. And so uh, this now the good result that we have with the, with the use of the tool is not only the tool itself, it's also combined with the, with the training. But the, you just see that it is a poten I mean, it's potentialized, like it's, it's synergized. It's just amazing uh, how this tool can bring a difference in the consultation process now. Yeah. Great. Good luck. Thank Thanks you. very much. Thank